Before we begin, a little disclaimer. This is not a tutorial. This is the solution of the question of the final exam. So students who took the test can compare their answers. But before even attempting it, let's have a preamble. In class, we saw that in a Y-connected load, there was a relationship between the line voltage and the phase of voltage. The line voltage from A with respect to B, VAB, and the voltage between phase A and the neutral was given by this phase and diagram. In that, we saw in class that the line voltage was root 3 times the RMS value of the phase to neutral voltage. Not only that, the phase of this line voltage is 30 degrees ahead of the neutral to phase voltage VAN. That was one class and that we, we will apply to this question in the final exam. Also, as part of your homework, you were asked to explore further the relationship between line currents and phase currents in a delta connected load. Let's revisit that homework. What is the relationship between this current entering phase A and the currents in the delta? Out of symmetry and three phase balance, the three currents in the delta have the same magnitude like so, and they are out of phase by 120 degrees. Now, in node A, we can use a KCL equation and say the sum of all the currents going in, that is this one and this one, are equal to the current leaving the node. IA plus ICA equals to IAB. From there, we can solve for the current in the line A, IAB minus ICA, IAB minus ICA. This current minus this one. In other words, this current IAB plus the negative of this current, which is drawn down here, the negative of ICA. We add those two together and we get this phasor which is the line current, IA. So IA, as seen in class, for a delta connected load is root 3 times the current inside the delta in each one of the branches in magnitude in RMS value. And the phase of IA is 30 degrees less than the phase of the current flowing from A to B. Now, as part of the preamble, let's revisit the lecture in which we obtain the formula for total three-phase power. This one. That formula we all remember, total three-phase power, was the sum of the power in each one of the branches. So we compute the power in each one of those branches, we add them together, and that is the total three-phase power. This is what we did. You know why? We had the total three-phase power was three times the power in one of these branches. The power here would be the RMS V5Y, this one, times the RMS I5Y, the current, multiplied by the power factor of that load. And the power factor was a cosine of the difference between the, the phase of the voltage in that branch minus the phase of the current in that very same branch. And that was the formula for the total three-phase power. Then we replaced V5Y by this expression. Uh, the current in that branch is the same line current. And the total three-phase power came to be root 3 times RMS V line, RMS I line, and the power factor of one of those branches, the cosine of this angle. Angle of the voltage in that phase minus angle of the current in that very same phase, and that is the meaning of that angle theta. What about in a delta? In a delta, the computation of the total three-phase power proceeded along the same lines, that is, compute the power in one branch and multiply that times three. The power in one branch was RMS of the voltage, this one, 
times the RMS value of that current in that branch, times the cosine of the angle between that voltage and this current. That is the power factor of this branch, cosine of the phase of that voltage minus the phase of that current in there. Then we did the usual the replacement of that uh, phase of voltage in A delta is the line of voltage in RMS, of course, and the phase current is the line current RMS divided by root 3. We arrived at the very same formula. The total three phase power is root 3 times RMS V line, RMS I line, and the power factor of one of the branches, the cosine of this angle, the angle between this voltage and this current. That's what it is. That formula held not only in a delta but in a y. So it's universal when it comes to balanced three phase systems. Those are the two results from our homework and our classes that we will use in this solution. Let's read it. Answer each question as succinctly as possible. A positive sequence three phase system of voltages feeds a load with a line voltage VAB for 80 and 120 degrees. Those are volts. And the line current IA, which is 20 amps with negative 90 degrees. Now the first question is for a delta connected balanced three phase load. What is the phase current from A to B, both in magnitude and in phase? Well, because the line current is 20 with negative 90 degrees amps, the current from phase A to B in the delta will have a magnitude that is 1 over root 3 times the current in the line, and the phase is 30 degrees more than the current in the line. It's negative 60 degrees. And that was the answer. Part B. For a Y-connected, balanced, three-phase load, there is an N missing here. What is the phase of voltage VAN, both in magnitude and in phase? Well, in a Y, we know that the line of voltage A with respect to B is for 80 when 120 degrees. These are volts. So the voltage of A with respect to the neutral in the Y is for 80, this RMS value, divided by root 3. And the phase would be 30 degrees less than that of the line, only 90 degrees. Part C. In terms of line values, what is the formula for total three-phase active power seen in class? And then as a separate part, apply that formula to this set of voltages and currents and see what is the total three-phase active power. Well, the formula for the total three-phase power in terms of line values was root three times V line, I line, RMS values, of course, cosine of theta. And that was fine. Mm. But then we had to apply that. Let's see who they are. Root 3 V line. Who is V line? V line is given. V line is up here, 480 volts. And then I line in RMS value. Who is that I line in RMS value? It's given it's 20 amps or oh, 20 amps. Excellent. But now, cosine of theta. What angle is there? Well, that is the phase of the voltage minus the phase of the current. But the question is, which voltage? and which current, because after all, there are many voltages and currents in this uh, three-phase connection. We show in class that that angle is the angle between the phase voltage and the phase current. The phase of voltage, that would be this one, right? Yes, this one, absolutely. 90 degrees, okay, 90 degrees, minus the, uh, the phase current is it well the phase current would be in a y would be negative 90 so 90 minus negative 90 that is of course 180 degrees this is a cosine of 180 which is negative 1 and the 
absorbed power is negative. It's negative 16.6 .6 kilowatts. Uh, you say, why are you using uh, the phase voltage and the phase current of a Y? Could I use that for a delta? Sure, of course, we could. We saw that in class. Let's do uh, that for a delta phase. That would be and that would be phase of the voltage 120 minus the phase of the current through that uh, branch of the delta and that would be this one minus 60 that would be 120 minus minus 60 again we have 180 degrees the angle is 180 and the cosine of 180 is negative 1 so we get the same result Finally, in terms of line values, what is the formula for total three-phase reactive power seen in class? And then apply that to the set of voltages and currents in the problem. What is the total three-phase reactive power? Well, Q3 phase is rho 3, V line, I line, and the sine of the same angle as in part C. There, rho 3, 480, 20 amps sine of 180 degrees of course that is zero vars and that's the solution of question number two in this exam thank you very much